Thank you. This year's theme for the Students for Liberty Conference is the Liberty Vote. When it's time for me to vote for president, I don't know whom I'll pick. My preferred Republican candidate dropped out. That was Senator Rand Paul. Why didn't, <laughs> why didn't he do better? I, I don't know. But Jerry Taylor says he knows. Uh, Jerry's president of the libertarian think tank that is Scannon Center. He used to be with the Cato Institute. He's a smart guy who's taught me stuff. But now he says libertarians ought to be less pure. Not quite. I think libertarians need to be a little bit more realistic. The best investigation of how many people in America think like we do in this crowd, uh, it's about 5%, and that's being generous. I mean, I, my candidate was Ron Paul, too, and he didn't make it. He had his teeth kicked in by a variety of authoritarians who are taking this country in the most ill-liberty direction I've ever seen in my lifetime. My point is... For 35 years, we've organized the Move Libertarian Ideas, and we haven't gotten very far. And unless we rethink what we're selling and how we're selling it, we're going to keep coming back to meetings mm -hmm. like this talking about a libertarian rethink moment. Rethink it that how? Isn't here. Rethink it how? Let me give you an example. One of the reasons that people in academia and intellectual life in American politics have a hard time with libertarians is when Rand Paul says things like, well, if I was a senator in 1964, I would have voted against the Civil Rights Act. Why? Because he believed in protecting the rights of people to discriminate against others. Most Americans are not going to embrace a candidate who says, tough, people should just suffer in the, under the teeth of bigotry because but white Paul people have that right. But Rand Paul just said, I object to two parts of the nine parts which outlaw private discrimination, saying in your private business you get to say, I'll only serve people if they stand on their heads if you want. Right, and 5% of the American public says yes to that, and 95% say no, and in my opinion, rightly so. What what else could Rand Paul say that would have changed somebody's mind? Even people like Milton Friedman and F.A. Hayek supported a robust welfare safety net to help the indigent and the poor. But a safety net, but how robust? It's grown from a safety net to this giant hammock. 65% of all entitlement spending don't go to poor people. It is a picture of deep distress. And if you don't address it, what do you get? You get Donald Trump campaigns where immigrants are scapegoated for economic problems, foreign trade is scapegoated for economic problems, and we don't find ourselves in a more liberty world. We find ourselves moving in exactly the opposite direction. We shouldn't support open free trade? We should absolutely support open free trade, but we're not going to get open free trade if people think that in the, in the economy they operate in, if there's not a safety net and they don't think they'll be taken care of, they're not going to embrace a laissez-faire economy. And that's but just the unfortunate fact There is a safety life. net. It's just there. Not very robust, which is why they turn to people like Bernie Sanders, which if you look at what the average poor person receives, for instance, food stamps. We hear a lot about that. You know what the average household uh, receipt is for food stamps? A few dollars a day. They're not getting rich on food stamps. And yet you hear stories on the right all the time about how people don't get jobs because they want to get food stamps. That's ridiculous. If we had to choose between a robust social welfare safety net and a free market economy, or less of a safety net, less protection for the poor, and thus a more regulated, less free economy, which would you choose? So your plan for victory is to surrender? No, it's not to surrender. <laughs> I don't believe it's a surrender when you tell people that we're going to have a laissez-faire economy, and, in, and if you were not blessed moving into this economy, the skill set and characteristics that allow you to contribute, tough. I don't think that's surrender. And you say we should be more sympathetic to Sanders. On civil liberties and foreign policy, he's arguably the most libertarian candidate in this race. On economic issues, he's not. But there's more to liberty than the price of ketchup. But economics really matters. Gotta economics matters, but so does... <laughs> Audience, questions for Jerry Taylor. I think one of the reasons why your founding fathers created this country to be federal is that states can compete uh, among each other uh, with the welfare systems. One state can have it, another will not have it. That's one of the reasons why people are constantly moving from the People's Republic of California to the free state of Arizona. Yeah, why should the feds run it? Well, there's a pretty good argument that you want competition in government, and there's no principled objection to that. But when we as libertarians talk about the poor and the indigent, our narrative, in my opinion, cannot be Taxation is theft. Taking from A to give to B is a gross violation of all that is right and holy. And if you can't contribute to a market economy, beg for your supper or go dive through a dumpster. We can't say that without finding ourselves in the current position where we are, which is 5% of the American public and near political irrelevance in Washington.
Bernie Sanders is great, Medicare for all. He wants to expand social security. He wants, he wants all of this. And uh, how, like, how is that not a legitimate complaint when he wants to expand the welfare for the middle class, not just the poor? It's a perfectly legitimate complaint. I agree with you 100%. And I think libertarians have an opportunity to say, look, if we are going to take from some to give to the others, let the others be poor people who need it, not middle class people who don't need it. I think there's a tremendous opportunity and opening for libertarians to full avoid in American politics. And I hope that we can get there. What's the point of having a free market economy where we can become wealthier when 60% or 70% of our wealth is then taken away from us? Well, let's just engage, seriously engage in this thought experiment. What if it is indeed the case that since most people in America are not hardwired like us, and I think we, like us, and I think we all know that perfectly well, right? We're in college campuses. We know that libertarians are not typical amongst your classmates. So if we know that's the case, and we know that people are not going to embrace a laissez-faire, hotly competitive economy without trade barriers or labor barriers, and it just essentially lets the economy rip, and they're not going to embrace that unless there's some sort of guarantee that if they can't contribute productively to that economy, they're going to disappear and fall through the cracks. Thank you, Jerry Taylor.